What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. We're here at Redbeard Motorcycles and today we're going to be taking apart that thing. Now before we could actually get started working on the bike, we first had to get it up onto the workbench. Take two, and action! Okay, third time's the charm. I decided to get started by draining the oil, so I had to remove the sump plug drain plug. But as you can see, I struggled with this quite a bit. There we go. Next, I decided it was time to take the exhaust headers off. Now here's a little hack I use whenever I need to turn an allen key and I don't have a power bar. I first start by threading the eye of a spanner into the allen key. I then apply pressure onto this spanner which gives me leverage over the allen key. This makes it so much easier to turn the bolts and you can see I'm using long allen keys in order to get to the header bolts. Next up was starting to remove the rest of the exhaust system from the motorbike. Which of course wouldn't be complete without yet another fail. The next step was to remove my oil cooler. Oh, I just dropped a crash washer in the oil. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, chuck it away, buy new ones and put the stuff on. Yeah. So clever me, forgot my key for the bike at home, and now. My seat is locked, I can't get in. We're gonna try to take these panels off and see if we can't actually get to the wire that's in the back here that actuates the seat locking mechanism so we can try and break into my bike. One eternity later. Hey, hey, we broke in. After having broken into my bike, the next step was to try and get the fuel tank off. Then I started loosening up the airbox so that I could extract the carburetors. Which is an extremely finicky process and requires a ton of patience from my part. Now I know a lot of people with very good eyesight can see that one of the throttle cables are still connected. However, I've only ever had success getting this last throttle cable out once the carburetor bodies are actually out of the frame. The next step was to remove the front sprocket cover so that I could remove the engine sprocket and chain before finally dropping the motor out of the frame. But this was to be the point where the smooth sailing finally met its first rough patch of seas. Turns out that the Loctite that holds the little bolt onto the output shaft for my speed sensor 
is like so much tighter than what we can actually get it out so we've now stripped out the inside of the bolt and we're going to try and make a plan with welding a nut onto the end so we can get it off i really wasn't expecting for a complication like this to happen now while i was outside filming that last little scene one of the skill technicians at redbeard motorcycles took on the challenge of loosening that stubborn bolt and i must say he worked his magic and succeeded the experience made me appreciate the expertise and dedication of the team at Redbeard Motorcycles. At Redbeard Motorcycles, they go above and beyond to ensure that your motorcycle is in top-notch condition. Whether it's routine maintenance, repairs, or even customizations, their team of dedicated technicians is equipped with the knowledge and skills to handle it all. From basic tune-ups to complex engine overhauls, they offer a wide range of services to cater to the needs of every rider. They use quality parts and meticulous attention to detail, ensuring that your motorcycle receives the attention and care that it deserves. What sets them apart is their commitment to customer satisfaction. They understand that your motorcycle is not just a machine, but a passion. And that's why they take the time to listen to your concerns, provide expert advice, and deliver personalized service tailored to your specific requirements. So whether you're a seasoned rider or just starting your motorcycle journey, you can trust Redbeard Motorcycles to keep your bike running smoothly and reliable. So, next time you need professional motorcycle servicing, repairs or even upgrades, I highly recommend checking out Redbeard Motorcycles. They have the expertise, experience and passion to take care of your beloved machine. Check out the links in the description to find out more about Redbeard Motorcycles. And let them know that Matt sent you. Now all we had to do was tidy up all the loose bits before we could take apart the cradle and finally drop the motor from the frame. Play games on that end, yeah. With the cradle removed, we were just moments away from finally getting the engine out of the motorcycle. All we had to do was remove the last few engine mounting bolts and make sure that we had plenty of clearance in order to take the motor out. Is that the last bolt? That's it. Okay, I'm going to take my hand yes. under the frame. Yeah. So between the end and the frame, you can't just drop it. You ready? Come give it a. Let's go that way. So, yeah, um, going to have to, okay, so the engine is going to have to come a bit forward and up. The bottom is going to have to come a bit forward because you need to make sure that they here. Stand this side, Lee. Grab it there, and I'll lift it from this side. Grab like here. Yeah. And I'll try to lift it over this way. Okay. Okay, it's just on the back end, you might get a little stuck. It will come out as usual. Okay, come on, Lee. Can you come over there? You guys got it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, one more time. Up and out, it's on the back mountain, so it must come that way. From this side? Yeah. Mm. Okay, you're in now on that. Look on the kill. Sorry, 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 sorry. It's cool, it's cool. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm It's like it's caught from the... The... Almost, almost. Cut. Yes, yes. Okay, grab it. I got you, I got you, I got you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, I'm going to bring you a couple of times. Uh, the other things on here. Just put it down. Just put it down on the floor for now, Timmy. Put it against the wall. It stands up straight. Okay. 
Move that engine quick and bring me the trolley. Okay, I'll get it. We're gonna put it against the wall. Yeah. Come on, Doug, is everything you need? Okay. One, two, three. The sun plugs back, but it's dripping from the uh, from the front. Okay. From the hoses. Um, let's put a small bit of cloth in there. Oh. All right, pretty quick. Look at that. Docker. Well, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, now that the engine is out of the Suzuki Bandit, that is going to wrap it up for this video. It was a good almost five hours worth of work, but thanks to the magic of editing, I've been able to summarize it to make it quite concise, or at least a lot more than what it was. I especially would like to say thank you very much to Redbeard Motorcycles and Redbeard Riding Academy, the sponsor of today's video, because without their expertise and guidance, I would have absolutely struggled to get the motor out of my bandit. Trust me, I've done it before. It was not pretty. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel down below. It lets YouTube know that you want to see more of my content, which is especially good because the next time I work on my bike, I will actually be splitting the motor in half so I can get down to the root cause of the issues with my gearbox. I also want to say a huge shout out to my patrons over on patreon.com because your support goes an absolutely long way in keeping this channel going. If you want to become a patron and support this channel, you can check the links in the description down below. You'll also get exclusive access, behind the scene contents and early access to some of my content. So be sure to check it out and support the channel. Lastly, I just want to say guys, remember life is going to throw a ton at you. But whatever it does, just remember, don't look down, look ahead. And until next time, ride safe.